I believe that uh, there's a picture of you floating in microgravity. <laughs> uh, when when did you get to experience that? What was that like? Ah, so I've flown nine times wow. on the affectionately known as the Vomit Comet. It's the parabolic flight, and essentially it does what you'd want a plane never to do. It pitches really steeply upwards at 45 degrees. Oh, that's a picture of you. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> test rate. That's super early in my PhD. Some of just the passive tiles, before we even put electronics in, we were just testing the magnet polarity and the, essentially, is it an energy-favorable structure to self-assemble on its own? So we tweaked a lot of things between. Are we looking at a couple of them? Yeah, you're looking at a bunch of them there. It's oh, almost, oh, almost oh, 32 well, of them. Yeah. Cool. And they're, they're clumping. Like they're clumping. Yeah. Can you comment on what's the difference between microgravity and, and zero gravity? Yes. So is that there an important is difference? it's an important difference. There is no zero gravity. There's no nothing there's in the universe there is no, no such thing as zero gravity. So Newton's law of gravity tells us that there's always gravity attraction between any two objects. So zero g is a shorthand that some of us fall into using, or it's a little easier to communicate to the public. The accurate term is microgravity, where you are essentially floating, you're weightless, but generally in free fall. So on the parabolic flights, the vomit comet, you're in free fall at the end of the parabola. And in orbit oh, around the so earth, cool. when you're floating, you're yeah. also in free fall. What so was that's it like? Ah. Uh, uh, so affectionately called vomit comet. I'm sure there's a reason why it's called affectionately. <laughs> so, so what's it like? What's uh, your first time? So both philosophically, yeah. spiritually, and biologically, what's it like? It's profound. It is unlike anything else you will experience on Earth because it is this true feeling of weightlessness with no drag. So the closest experience you can think of would be floating in a pool, but you move slowly when you float in a pool and your motion is restricted. When you're floating, it's just you and your body flying like in a dream. Mm -hmm. um, it takes the littlest amount of energy, like a finger tap against the wall of the plane to shoot all the way across the fuselage. Wow, and you can move at full speed. Like mm -hmm. you're, you, you can move your arms. Exactly. So your muscles There's work. no, yeah. There's no resistance. There's like no resistance. Be in the pool. They actually tell you to make a memory when you're on the plane, because it's such a fleeting experience for your body that even a few days later, you've already forgotten exactly what it felt like. It's so foreign mm. to the human experience. They kind of suggest that you explicitly try to really form this into a memory and then you yes. could do the replay. Is Cognitively for training or for freeze just it. Yeah. <laughs> Save. Right. Uh, when we have Neuralink, we can replay that. There um, you go. The, the replay <laughs> that memory. So in terms of how much stress it has on your body. Is it mm. uh, biologically stressful? You do feel a 2G pullout, right? So the cost of getting those uh, micro-G parabolas is you then have a 2G pullout. And that's hard. You have to train for it. Uh, if you move your neck too quickly on that 2G pullout, you can strain muscles. Um, but I wouldn't say that it's actually a a profound, um, tough thing on the body. It's really just an incredibly novel experience. And when you're in orbit and you're not having to go through the ups and downs of the parabolic plane, there's a real grace and elegance. And you see the astronauts learn to operate in this completely new environment. What are some interesting differences between the parabolic plane and when you're actually going up in orbit? Mm. Is, is it that with orbit you can look out, out and see? Yeah that blue little planet of ours. You can see the blue marble, the stunning overview effect, which is something I hope to see one day. Um, what's also really different is if you're in orbit for any significant period of time, there's gonna be a lot more physiological changes to your body than if you just did an afternoon flight on the Vomit Comet. Everything from your bones, your muscles, your eyeballs change shape. Uh, there's a lot of different things that happen for long duration space flight. And we still have to, as scientists, we still have to solve a lot of these interesting challenges to be able to keep humans thriving in microgravity or deep duration space missions.